Synergy. Welcome to Synergy. Live with Synergy. Live with Synergy. This is your host, Andrea John Baptiste. Welcome to Synergy, where music, business, and culture synchronize. Of course, I guess. This is Andrea John Baptiste, and I welcome you to another edition of Synergy, where music, business, and culture synchronize. Yes, we know it's your favorite drive time talk show here on 99.1 WDJY FM in Atlanta. And I want to say, you know, we've got a lot going on culturally, a lot going on in our time. But I'm also hoping at knowing, I should say, that today's show will bring you just a little bit of joy because I think we have an amazing, amazing guest. But before I introduce our guest today, I just want to shout out a couple of people who are always tuning in, already tuned in, and I thank you. Mark and Lisa Blaze of Blaze FM, and the show is simulcasted on Glue FM with Mark and Lisa every Thursday, so that's G-L-U-F-M dot com, that you can tune in if you want to check them out as well. On Friday night, they have a show called Goal Diggers, G-O-A-L Diggers, and get awesome interviews from around the world in terms of music and other urban lifestyle and information. That's 7 to 9 on Blue FM. And on Saturdays from 7 to 9, they have the Night Guru, which is streamed also in New York and the U.K., where you also get good music, good vibes, good energy. So if you have a chance and you're so inclined, tune in on Fridays and Saturdays from 7 to 9 for, with Mark and Lisa Blaze. No more ado, right? So it's not much ado about nothing. It's much ado about something, sending out love and light. Today I'm calling the show Eat, Live, and Play. Why? Because we're going to talk about eating, we're going to talk about living, and we're going to talk about playing. Yeah, what are you talking about, crazy lady? Well, we have an amazing, very, very diverse multi-talented, multi-faceted guest today, and his name is Jason Wharton. Jason, greetings, 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 and welcome to Synergy. Yes, thank you. Greetings and no flows. Thank you. Are a yoga teacher, you're a musician, you're also a farmer. Um, how mm-hmm. has your Jamaican upbringing shaped your music, business, and cultural outlooks and perspectives? Okay, that's a really great question. I definitely feel like I'm a product of my environment in many ways. I mean, musically, my biggest influences have come from Jamaica, and the ones that did not come from Jamaica were still influenced by Jamaican music and culture. So myself as a musician and a songwriter, I'm very influenced by, you know, Bob Marley, Peter Tosh, and Bonnie Whaler. Um, in terms of, you know, statement music. We like to make spiritual music, root music. I mean, just music talking about the real basics of life and living together. So I really love the title of your show today as well, the Eat, Live, and Play. I think that is so fitting. Um, but yeah, musically though, I'm also influenced. I have a lot of reggae influence in my songs. But I also take a lot of influence from rock and the blues, especially like classic blues and classic rock. So, you, you, you know, like one of my favorite sounds, just in terms of a sound, is like Black Uhuru. Because mm. you had a little bit of that rock guitar. Like, I don't think a lot of people know this, but apparently Keith Richards from the Rolling Stones, you know, he, a guy who loves Jamaica, and he's done a lot of work with Sly and Robbie. And some of those iconic guitar phrases you hear like um in um shine i girl is is key to just playing that 
guitar riff that bang gang 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 I mean that's what I've always heard. But just to say that whole sound, that black Uhura dub, you know, heavy dub wise reggae with some nice textured blues guitar riff. So that kind of thing, you know, I love Sting and the Police, that kind of punky reggae. Mm -hmm. So my music is very much Jamaican and even the stuff that's not Jamaican, it was still influenced by Jamaican music. Just that whole kind of mixture of influences. So I think that's something that really defines Jamaica as a as a West Indian country, as a Creole society. We have so much influence from different places. So culturally as well is a lot like that as well. We've, I think um, the the whole thing we have, like I said, of adapting and learning to roll with the punches. And it might not be something that's very unique to Jamaica alone. Like lots of places have these values, but it's definitely very central to Jamaican values and culture. You know, you have to be adaptable. You have to wear different caps. You know, there's that stereotype in other countries of Jamaicans where, oh, yeah, Jamaican person, they probably have three jobs, five jobs, work hard, <laughs> some hardworking people. So... That is me with all the different things. I mean, I do music, yoga. I do some, I do a bit of hospitality stuff too, you know. I, I do some tours. People come here and they want to have a surf experience. Not many people know that we have some good waves in Jamaica. There's some good surfing here. Or yoga influence tours. So, you know, as a Jamaican, I just do a lot of things. The farming as well. So I think that probably leans over into the business as well, being mm -hmm. flexible, but flexible also in the sense of with you Tonya Hanan make fashion you know with what what do we have access to all right that mm -hmm. is what we're going to develop and learn to use so mm -hmm. something might not have value to somebody else but we will find a way to uh, what did you say extract some value mm -hmm. as they say as they say the state uh, one man's trash is another man's treasure and Jamaicans we sure know how to turn trash into treasure. Wow, that's mm -hmm. huge. And you know, I, I did not know that um, in terms of the influences um, with Black Uhuru and the, the work with Black Uhuru and so on. I too like a, a, a variety of sounds. So let's start because there's so much diversity in your work, in your lifestyle, um, in, in, your, in who you are. But let's start with the musician. Mm -hmm. Talk to us about your intro to music. How did you get interested or introed into music? How did it get started? And of all those instruments that you, you play, is there a favorite? Okay, well, first of all, definitely guitar. Guitar is definitely my favorite instrument. I mean, well. I don't actually remember um, becoming interested in music. It's just it's the first thing I ever wanted to do. You know, I found this little book that my parents must have given me when I was really little. I must have been about six or seven. And one of those books, you know, write your name, draw a picture of yourself. You know, one of those things people will give their children sometimes. And I looked and said, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I wrote musician. I'm so wow. glad I found this book just to get that affirmation because I just remember begging my parents, to let me learn music so mm -hmm. there was a guitar I think it was my mother's guitar and it was just there you know I just remember this guitar always being there lean up in the corner of my grandparents house and so that is also another thing too my, my mother who is actually a, an artist she's a visual artist and an art teacher she happened to play music you know my mother can play the piano and the guitar and the flute to different extents so I definitely have to give my parents full credit because I was just exposed very early to instruments and the idea of people playing more than just one instrument. Because mm. people would tell me when I was growing up, you know, you're going to have to pick one instrument. You cannot play piano and guitar and three different wind instruments and so on and so on. And I would just think, uh huh, you've been here, but you're not so? convincing me. Yeah, exactly. Who says so? <laughs> and when it okay when it became very concrete to me because this is stuff that when you're a child you just take things for granted like you know mm -hmm. i remember asking my father what instrument he played one day and he just laughed and said um the record player the turntable 
as in he doesn't play an actual instrument. And I was shocked because, you know, when children are figuring out things and reasoning to themselves, to me, to this day, I still feel like, but everybody should be playing an instrument. If everybody in the world played an instrument, I think the world would be a different place, you know, like, really. So I just had this assumption that everybody probably just picked like how people say you have a spirit animal. I think everybody just has an instrument that calls out to them and they choose that instrument. Like everybody in the world. But I had to learn that this is just me <laughs> assuming things. But I don't know if you're familiar with the musician Chuck Mangione. You, you know, he had mm-hmm. some really big songs, I think, like in the 80s. Mm-hmm. He's a, it's not a trumpet. It's a, it's a cornet. Mm-hmm. Look just like a trumpet. I mean, I still mix them up sometimes. But anyway, he had that big hit, Feeling Good, you know. It's a beautiful melody. And this is another thing I have to, well, I have to give Jamaica credit for this one. But Chuck Mangione came and did a concert here. Lots of really big international artists have performed in Jamaica. You know, we're so fortunate in this little island in the Caribbean. We yeah. have had some of the world's biggest people come here to perform. I mean, Ray Charles yeah. and Ray Charles and all kinds of people, Celine Dion. You know, we, we are very fortunate. So, so anyway, the story is that Chuck Mangione comes, and there's a member in his band that played like five instruments on the night. You know, he played the guitar, he played a few wind instruments, and my parents took me to this concert when I was about 12, maybe. 10, 11, somewhere around that age. And I see this guy just pulling out instrument after instrument. And that definitely was like a, a galvanizing moment where I thought, no, I don't have to pick an instrument. Mm-hmm. Look at this guy. No, I'm going to be like this guy, that. Right. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be like that. I'm going to play every instrument that I can. I'm just going to collect instruments if I can get my hands. And I literally just pray for an instrument sometimes, you know, like for years I wanted a pair of tablas, you know, those Indian drums and they sound like they're singing, doom, 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 and it just sound really mm-hmm. musical. And I don't know, eventually I just had an opportunity, like a little work trade situation with somebody and they said, okay, I can bring some tablas to Jamaica for you. I never wow. thought I would get my hands on tablas or harmonium or, you know, a couple of other Indian instruments and... I have one or two African instruments, like the Ndira. And um, I don't know, I've just always been exposed to these things. And it's, it's kind of like that Bob Marley interview where they ask him, how long have you been a Rasta? And, you know, Bob mm. just goes, what? I am a Rasta from creation, you know, yeah. mm-hmm. or something like that, you know. Mm-hmm. It's just mm-hmm. always been at the, the center of my whole reality. Wow. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful story because, I mean, it really is amazing and impressive. Now, let me ask you this. What's the most, quote-unquote, unusual instrument or one that folks are not always familiar with that you play? Oh, okay. Well, I could think of a few, but one definitely is the didgeridoo, you know, that (gasps) Australian. Yes, that one. That one. Yeah, man. I have, so I, I have I never have met a didgeridoo player. Yay, yay, yay. Oh, okay. my. I can see check there. it off the bucket list. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you see, yeah, it was like a bucket list for me, too, because wow. I basically, I went on a YouTube binge, which is something that I, I do sometimes, and you would have come to my house after a month's time, and you would have said, but you're still, you're still watching didgeridoo videos. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I just love it. Listen, first I was listening to the real authentic, traditional, and now I'm listening to the crossover, you know, fusion stuff. And basically, I realized that you can make a didgeridoo from bamboo. Oh, so for any listeners who are not sure what I'm talking about, that's the Australian mm-hmm. Aboriginal instrument, and it's like a drone, and it just sounds real trippy and 
out mm-hmm. of this world, like, you know, wang, uh, yeah. wang, 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 wang. You know really what it cool. always reminds me of? Twilight Zone. The show, the Twilight Zone, some of the sound oh. effects that you hear in the Twilight mm. Zone. I don't know why. Whenever I hear Degree Dude, that's what I think of. That's the, the, oh. the, the visual picture that the sound simulates for me. Mm-hmm. Well, I will never forget that. I've never heard that before, but I'll never forget <laughs> it because I saw... So after, I mean, the whole history of the didgeridoo is that it was most of it, a lot of the time used to recreate sounds of animals mm-hmm. and spirits. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it's storytelling and, you know, different sounds are specifically the sound of a kangaroo jumping or a, or a dingo barking or a certain wow. bird. Or, so it's so fascinating that that is your feeling when you hear them because yeah that that is part of the whole essence is creating imagery wow and wow. it does it it it, crea- it creates a very interesting out of like you said out of this world um imagery for me i'm learning mm. so much and you know synchronizers <laughs> i hope you are too because this is just i i knew when last week oh so let me just go back because last week i told you guys that we kind of ended the show early because we went over time with our first guest, right? And I said, but, and I didn't want to just squeeze in the second guest. Well, this is the second guest. This is who it was going to be, Mr. Jason Wharton, who is mm-hmm. a musician, songwriter, yoga instructor, farmer, and many, 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 many other things as we talk about Eat, Live, Play. So I know I am not disappointed. This is my first time talking in depth with Jason. Met him several years ago while mm. he was on tour. I believe it was with Protege um, yes. a couple years ago um, and had a, a brief conversation. But this is the, the most in depth that I've had, and I am certainly not disappointed. And what you say, Synchronizers, mm. I know you're not. Now, Jason. You have a new album called Earth Cycle, and I just love the name, and I Mm. love the songs that you have shared with us. I can't wait for it to be released so we can get our copy as well. Describe Earth Cycle, what what was behind it, what motivated it, and what can folks expect? Um, Okay, so this particular project is is quite personal for me on many levels. a lot of it is being drawn from that title. And actually, I really don't like to name things. And this one was finally something easy to name. It, was, it almost felt obvious to me. Because as one of the tracks we're going to play for your listeners is called Earth Cycles. So it's the title track of the album. And part of it is that I am very passionate about environmental concerns, conservation, you know, harmony with nature respect and harmony with nature and um, I think at this particular moment in history not just right now I mean even just this whole this whole decade I, I think even this whole lifetime that we are living in I think this is a really central thing that we the more awareness the better because you know we're living in changing times in a changing world and we need to have more balance in order for us all to to live our best lives. And mm-hmm. um, Earth Cycle, in terms of the, the themes, a lot of the songs either directly or indirectly address different things about how we live with each other, with nature, with our food. Um, one of the songs I've sent to you to play for people is called Breath, which is, mm-hmm. it talks about a few different things, but it's really centered around you know, being present in your breath and your, your surroundings. So that one is a kind of yoga inspired as well. And um, also, there's something really unique about this album for me in that it's an acoustic album. And most people who know me as a musician, know me as a guitarist playing some electric guitar, you know, or Jamaican Carlos Santana or Jimi Hendrix. Mm-hmm. But this... And a lot of my earlier releases that I put out before were very electric. But I think it's, it's kind of a stage in my life right now. That some of the things I've gone through in my life the last few years have become a bit more introspective, a little bit more mellow and thoughtful. And I was just writing these songs and it just felt like they should be acoustic. I don't want to translate them into a big polished sound. 
you know, I want the whole thing to sound very organic and, you know, like something called Earth Cycles, Natural Organic Sounds and Themes. So, yeah. Wow. Uh, that is, I'm excited because I got, I got a little taste of it synchronizes and it tastes good. It good. It, it wait, mm. it's good, good, good for yam. Um, mm. <laughs> so good for consumption. So go ahead and, you know, with no further ado, let's just take a listen to the title song, Earth Cycle. Hey, think call Earth Cycle. Yo, you got to act like you know. You reap what you sow, eat what you grow. So share with your neighbor in need. Even in the face of defeat, stand firm. Whether in a victory or defeat, can you be humble when you speak? Look how many sit by in the streets begging for bread. Some people don't know the difference between us and, and a friend. Are back and I love it, right? You love it, you love it, you love it, you love it, you love it. I am sure <laughs> you love it because. I tell you, I played it several times. I received it this morning, and I played it several times throughout the day. And it just, it speaks. It speaks volumes. It's current. It's apropos. It's relevant. It makes you think. Um, made me a little, as they would say, dusty at, at some point, because it's, it's, it's the reality. Um, Jason, I, 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 I really full joy the, the song, and um, I know our synchronizers did too. So, Thank you. As you travel the world, you have seemingly delved into very many cultures and cultural experiences. Has there been any kind of like a defining moment in those travels and what has been your favorite place and why? Um, well, you know, th- this has been a, a, th- a theme that I've realized about myself recently. I don't like to choose favorites. I don't have a favorite color. It's like if you ask me my favorite Bob Marley song, I'm going to be like, why? <laughs> but I could still try and answer the question, though. Um, I have a few favorite places. I think, though, that the, one of the greatest defining moments in my travels, which I've mostly been as a musician, you know, on tour, which is kind of unique because you, you don't always have time to be a tourist. You know, the first time I went to Paris, it was in and out. No Eiffel Tower, nothing. It was just get off the bus, get on the stage. Oh, okay, get back on the bus. Let's drive for 12 hours now. So most people think touring is very glamorous and fun, but sometimes mm-hmm. it, it can be tiring just in the sense you, you have to know how to keep your balance so you can keep giving as much as you can give. So you have to make sure you're putting in to give out, but defining moment for me personally was just realizing the more I travel is the more similarities I see everywhere. So I think this is kind of touching on something you and I were talking about earlier, but that I, I really just see everybody as one big tribe. I don't, I see more similarities and differences and I just wish more people could have that experience or perspective because you travel to different continents And you just start to feel like, you know, people are the same. People are the Mm -hmm. same everywhere. The differences are literally skin deep. I mean, Mm -hmm. you have little cultural differences, sure. I mean, me and you are different individuals. Our families or our immediate communities might have certain distinguishing things about them. But still, at the end of the day, this is the biggest thing I'm grateful for in being able to travel so much has been not necessarily sightseeing like, oh, this was so amazing to see. It was more the people everywhere and starting to feel like, you know, we really are just one big family. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think that really, I mean, I love to see places, especially outdoors, mountain and, you know, hills and valleys. I, I love seeing the ocean. So actually leading into my favorite places. There have been places which were a little similar to Jamaica. I, I, I just love island life and tropical climates and, and also island culture. 
So I think off the back of my hand, I would have to say it's between Hawaii and Mauritius. Two wow. favorite, like, most special experiences. And also because I really believe in certain things like chakras, you know, both on your body but also on the planet. Mm. So when I, I so yes exactly so having been to those places coming mm-hmm. from Jamaica, I went there and recognized something immediately. You know, I step off the plane in Hawaii. Same thing when I got to Mauritius, and I said, I feel something familiar. There is there's some energy vortex, something. Mm-hmm. There's something mm-hmm. extra mystical. So mm-hmm. yes, how, I, Hawaii. I feel and, like that in Belize. I, I, I oh. feel like that whenever I go to Belize, there is something there for me, and I, I don't understand it, and I, but I appreciate it. But it feels that I know exactly what you're talking about because it feels right. like home. And I love Jamaica. I love Jamaica. I'm there frequently. It is the land of my birth. I'm proud. It's mm-hmm. a beautiful, beautiful place. But there is something in my spirit that synchronizes with Belize that it is un. Mm believable for me mm-hmm. so I, I get it yeah mm-hmm. yeah man mystical planet it's so yes yes absolutely so i want to talk about yogi the yogi but how did you get involved in yoga um you know it seems to be a very important part of your life and what would you say to folks who haven't tried it okay well personally it's just one of those things that makes me feel like you know in this life that we each live there is a lot of divine synchronicity and guidance and it's really up to us if we want to follow it or if we want to pursue other things because it's just like music it's like the bob marley interview again where bob just said well i and i are rasta from creation you know like i don't remember my first exposure to yoga from my earliest memories i've always been aware of it i don't know how um I, my first actual memory of yoga was finding a book, a yoga book, um, at a house that I just moved into with my family. You know, we move house and, oh, there's some stuff that somebody left behind. And there's a book on yoga and a book on Tai Chi. I love telling this story. So I found this yoga book and I just remember feeling a familiarity like, yes, I find it. I knew what it, it wasn't yeah. like I saw this book like yoga. What's that? Like mm-hmm. oh, a book on yoga. And I must have been about that age, like nine or ten or so. And I just started learning from this book one or two poses, and then from there I would learn one or two poses here and there, learn a little yoga and meditation. And you know, I must have been exposed to it in popular culture somewhere. Um, nobody in my family was really into yoga at the time. So maybe a TV show. I don't know. But I just remember always being aware and having this very strong interest in yoga. Um, and this is also part of the story that I love to tell about how I got into yoga. Is that I, um, I think you're probably familiar with the reggae singer Janine, mm-hmm. who is a very mm-hmm. close cool friend of mine. I know very Janine cool very, mine. very, very well. Right? Uh-huh. Okay, yeah. great. So... I know Janine from school. We were students at UWE, University of the West Indies. We were both there at the same time in first year. So we used to play music and stuff. We were both into music from that time. And then, you know, for fast forward a couple of years now, Janine is doing her teacher training mm-hmm. with Subhadra Bowman, whose franchise is called Yoga Angels, who I definitely have to big up because Subhadra trained me as well. So anyway, Janine calls me one day and she says, Jason, I bet you would love to do a free yoga class. You want to try out an actual yoga class, right? Because she knew I was into it. So I said, yeah, I've never been to a yoga class. I, I just kind of, you know, learn a little when I can. And what happened is she was doing her training. She needed guinea pigs. She needed somebody <laughs> to teach and have Subhadra watch her teaching and thing. And, you know, so she literally, she doesn't need a guinea pig. But I said, okay, great, sure. And another interesting thing is that I had just recently read this book called Siddhartha, which is not about mm-hmm. the original Siddhartha who became the Buddha, but it's a very, it's like a parallel story. Mm-hmm. And the book just had a big influence on me. It's like the right moment in my life 
when I was just feeling the stresses about work and money and, you know, the usual thing, just really stressed mm-hmm. out, you know. Being a musician is it's a stressful job. And I was also teaching music at the time and little things about that stressing me out. And this book just gave me a real moment of, aha, I need to slow down and tune into certain things. And then Janine invites me to our class. And mm-hmm. long story short, I thought I was flexible. But I was one of those people in the class struggling. So this is for people who have not tried yoga yet. Yoga is not for people who are already flexible. Yoga is for everybody. So there is the right class for you. Because I was in this class struggling just to breathe through my nose. I'm doing certain things and Janine is there. Breathe through your nose. Breathe through your nose. Relax your face. And I am there just like (laughs) struggling, you know. (laughs) <laughs> and at the, end, at the end of the class, I had this great, profound moment because we're lying down in what we call Shavasana pose. It's when you just lie down on your back. Class is finished now. Everyone just let your muscles cool down and just relax, take some deep breath. And I couldn't do it. I couldn't breathe properly. Mm. I had so much wow. tension in my body from stress. The stress had stored itself in my body to the point where I just, I couldn't breathe relaxed. My breath was really tight and shaky. And it wasn't like that when I got to the class. You know, the class itself had made things shift around and release. And things were mm. still releasing. And it was great because I realized, wow, this, I'm now aware of how things are affecting me physically. And it was also, honestly, it was, it was overwhelming to realize, oh my God, but hold on. I'm really letting stuff affect me. And I'm not going to lie. I actually, a lot of people tell this similar story too. I started to cry. I was lying mm-hmm. there and a few tears ran down my cheeks as I lay there trying to breathe because I was like, oh my, look at what happened to me now. But overall though, I was so glad. You know, I was grateful. I was like, okay, this, I am going to do this. I'm going to keep doing this because, yeah. This is helping something a lot. So, so yeah, it, to anybody who's never tried out yoga, I would say you should try yoga. Make sure you find the right class. You don't want to go to an advanced class where everybody around you is tying themselves into pretzels <laughs> because maybe, maybe your body is not ready for that and you shouldn't be intimidated. When I started, I just went to easy beginner classes just to learn the poses. Because there's so many details too, you know, and um, I just think yoga brings so much benefit to everybody, mind, body, spirit, just to let everything balance and connect because that's the meaning of the word yoga. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Wow, good, good, good story, great recommendations. How, how does yoga um, impact your music? Um, I would say it impacts it in a few ways. I mean, mainly in the, in the way that yoga is also a very philosophical practice. You know, people think it's just stretching and maybe breathing if they even are exposed to that much. But there's a lot of stuff in yoga which is philosophy of non-violence, non-stealing, non-lying. You know, this is pretty familiar to all of us. Um, but, you know, studying yourself, like, You'll hear Rasta people say, know yourself. You've heard Greek philosophers say, know thyself, to thine thyself. own self be true. To be true. And yoga, mm. yeah, so I find yoga definitely reinforces that in my life and kind of guides it into my music. Like um, the song Breath, mm-hmm. which we'll listen to in a while. Breath is really about taking some time, slow down, connect to your breath, um, be present, be grateful for the right things and, you know, focus on the right things. So, yeah, in that sense, yoga has definitely influenced my music in terms of it being the themes and the philosophies. It's, you know, my music definitely is not very um, material-based. It's not about possessions and, you know, it's not about flossing and flexing and, <laughs> and, and that kind of thing. And, I mean, there's a time and place for everything right. as well. So I'm def- you know, I'm definitely not speaking against music which celebrates um, 
abundance, if we want, we could no put man. it that way. Mm-hmm. We, we will yeah. understand. I mean, yeah, there's it's no fight against anything. There is a time and place. And like you said, we're one big family. There is a, there's a place for, for it all um, and so on. It's just what you, what you've taken away from the practice of yoga and how it influences and shapes your music. And, you know, it, 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 it shows the, based on the little that I know about um, yoga because I have only tried it maybe one time, um, very okay. loosely, and I think I think I might have to go with one of your online classes soon. But our time yes. is running short, and I don't, I definitely don't want to, to to for us to miss out on the farming aspect because mm, okay, um, I think that that's such an important thing. You know, all, music is important to me. Um, health and wellness is important to me, and you know, as the chronic song has said. You let your food be your medicine and your medicine be your food. And I know mm. that I certainly um, live and experience and see what food does and how food influences and, and impacts my body um, and have treated and am treating several, well, not several, health conditions with food. So when I talk to farmers, I go to the farm a couple of times a month to pick and pick my greens and pick mm. some of my berries and pick some of my fruits and we grow certain things. So I, I have a high, high, high level of respect for farmers. Um, so give us the what, where, why, um, and how you got involved in farming, Jason. Okay, sure. Um, I... Like most people, not just in Jamaica, but everywhere, I think, you know, just a few generations ago, a significant amount of my family would have been engaged in farming. So I think it's just a heritage of us all, everybody. And, and in these days, it's even more and more imperative to connect to these things because food security, you know, this is the biggest mm-hmm. thing we're all struggling with right now, Jamaica mm-hmm. and elsewhere, is just food security. Um, if we're in lockdown, how are we going to earn? So for me personally, I cannot even explain how grateful I am that I have space to farm and that I've been farming it because no music work, not keeping more than so, <laughs> you know, no concerts mm-hmm. going on right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and for me, it's like a full circle thing. You know, my biggest passion is plant-based medicine. And it's, it's really fascinating to me because my first name, Jason, originally translated to the healer. And I always wanted to be a doctor Mm. when I was growing up. You know, I wanted to be a musician or a doctor, but more a musician. Um, And my last name, Wharton, I looked it up, and it's it's this old English name that has to do with farming. Literally has to do with growing vegetables in the hillside. And how am I doing now? I'm living in the hills and (laughs) growing vegetables and and herbs. Wow. So permaculture, organic farming... The healer, so your name the is the the healer, the farmer. Yes, literally, that is what my name translates wow. to. So it's very Mind fascinating, blowing. you know. Mind blowing. And mm-hmm. yeah, and there, there's a lot of green thumbs in my family. I mean, I guess I got into it because living in the same home as my grandmother, one of my grandmothers, and she had her garden and things growing. You know, she used to tell me she never goes back inside empty-handed. You know, there's always mm-hmm. something for her to pick outside. And I really took that to heart as an as a inspiration. And I started helping her more as she started to slow down through the years. You know, she just passed away last year at the age of nine, sorry, 89. Sorry, my mm-hmm. other grandmother is 94. Yes, her mm-hmm. grandma was 89 when she mm-hmm. passed away. Yeah, man, healthy living, right? And just keep going mm-hmm. forever. Mm-hmm. Don't know when to mm-hmm. stop. Mm-hmm. And I just started mm-hmm. helping her more. She was slowing down and telling me, son, go and do this for me, do that for me. So, you know, I started learning that way as well until the point where I just got more interested in it to the point where my father had an interest in keeping bees and I started to get the interest too. So I got him one day, I said, Daddy, let's, let's, go, let's go get some bees. Let's, let's buy a beehive. This is how most people start. You buy a beehive and you start to learn as you work the bees and you learn from people and, you know, University of YouTube and things like that. Mm-hmm. There's just so much knowledge out there. And um, through the years, I've just gotten more and more into farming, especially when I was going through any kind of hard time or low time, like honestly, like breakups, 
a rough breakup after a relationship, I just lock up and I like to call it dirt therapy. You know, I just go play in the dirt mm-hmm. and grow something. Mm-hmm. But it's, def- mm-hmm. it's a big, big passion of mine, beekeeping and the chickens and lots of vegetables and herbs. I mean, I have so many things. I have a pharmacy outside right now, mm-hmm. you know, so much. I have a few books on folk medicines and traditional plant medicines of the Caribbean. And, you know, no disrespect to doctors, but I barely go mm-hmm. to them because I have a fairly healthy mm-hmm. system and I just go boil some bush tea, as we say. However, mm-hmm. yes, there is still times when I will go to the experts and I say I need a little extra help. So mm-hmm. I definitely would not want to advocate just totally foregoing science and medicine. I think we should take the best from both worlds. And, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes you just, you just need some garlic and honey to fight off a bug. <laughs> Bill of your so Yes, some anise, some sea moss, mm-hmm. some spirulina, some whatever, mm. whatever. And if you know how they work, I mean, some of them work with, with different systems and some of them don't. I had learned that over the process of treating thyself, um, going mm. into diagnostics and saying, okay, and realizing, you know what, this herb is not for my metabolism or this herb triggers, ah. triggers certain things and so on. Um, but this herb is will just knock it all out and this herb will fortify me, this herb, you know. So it is, it's so beautiful to hear you talk, to say that, because I always say to people, I typically go to the doctor for the diagnostics, okay? So Uh tell me what's wrong. And then I come back and use Granny's remedies, my books of herbal medicines, my, what I call my apothecary of various Mm. oils, um, yes. you know, my kitchen um, herbal garden and so on for the treatment as best as I can. So, but, you know, this is a good segue because we're talking about kind of the technology, science, medicine, and it all rolls into, um, they all, as we said, had their place. And in these three areas, right, as we've talked about eating, the farming pieces, the living, which I would say is the, the yoga as well as the music, the playing, also the yoga and the music. There are many mm-hmm. technological advances. Um, what's been the most useful for you and what, what's been the most disruptive? Hmm. Technical, technological advances, you say. Okay, mm-hmm. well, I, I think technology itself, um, the Internet and how advanced computers have become. Um, I'm so glad you bring that up. I mean, I'll try and be very um, to the point. I think that it's great that we have the internet. It gives everybody a voice, but that is all 7 billion of us. Mm. So as a musician, okay, I am no longer so much a prisoner of the record companies and things like that, you know. They are no longer so much a gatekeeper, except now the gate is just wide open. So it's you mm-hmm. and 7 billion other people. So it really gives us all a lot more access, but um, a lot more competition. And in mm-hmm. that sense as well, in terms of competition, um, as a musician, I, re- I have realized where my occupation is one of those many occupations which have become to different degrees, have become obsolete because of technology. You know, Mm. um, when I talk about some of the challenges, Mm -hmm. well, Mm -hmm. one of the biggest challenges in the music industry is you're trying to sell something that people get for free. So why should I buy your album when I can listen to it on YouTube for free? Mm. Gotcha. This is a Mm -hmm. very poignant question. Mm-hmm. You know, a hundred years ago, if you wanted to have a concert or you wanted to have a party, you know, it's a special occasion. We want some music. We want to dance. We, we need a band, right? Mm-hmm. And nowadays, oh, there's an app for that, you know, mm. that whole phrase. There's an app for that. That's in the consumption of music, but even in the mm-hmm. production of music, production. in studios. Mm-hmm. If I want, there's a lot less studio work for musicians nowadays because there's an app for that. 
I mean, mm-hmm. a lot of music is computer produced and they don't even use instrument sounds. It's like, let's get some crazy, drop a beat and a bass line and some fancy computer spacey sounding stuff. And even if we do want a guitar sound, there's an app for that. Mm-hmm. So, you know, once upon a time, anytime you wanted to record some music, you had to call musicians. We're going to need let's see, maybe a guitarist or maybe just a piano player, but we need musicians. And nowadays, so, you know, there's a lot less work for musicians in every aspect because technology. However, okay, so musicians are kind of cut out. Producers have too many options. So a lot of us musicians have become producers, myself included. Actually, here's a Mm -hmm. nice segue. I did almost everything on these songs on the album. Mm. I played almost mm-hmm. every instrument myself. I've done the engineering, the production. This is my first time doing more post-production, like the mixing. But you see, this gives me more opportunity. Okay, I have a laptop and some good software. Okay, that's a studio. So this is great. This is great. However, Jimi Hendrix is one of my greatest influences as a musician and otherwise, just as a human being. Jimmy and Bob Marley, they only had to focus on a few things, you know, be the greatest guitarist or songwriter that you can be. If they were alive nowadays, they would be, maybe, maybe they would be there like, okay, but I need to figure out, I need to learn how to use Pro Tools. And I need Mm -hmm. to to do a little video editing for my Instagram channel, which I am like the, the marketing and advertising exec for like, you know, it's a lot more pressure and you don't get to focus on your instrument as much. Like, when I decided to invest more in myself as an artist and I um, returned to focusing on my stuff and freelancing and um, I had to really reduce my practice time. You know, when, when I was in Protégé's band full-time, I was teaching myself the cello. Mm. I don't have time for that, no. I need to redo my website and, you know, all kind of stuff. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, yeah, technology wow. itself. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, on both sides of the coin, from the production side as well as the consumption time. Synchronizers, I hope you have full joyed this conversation as much as I have because we're mm. on with Jason Wharton, musician, yogi, farmer, um, and just extraordinary human being. And you mm, know the insights, you. the insights, the insights. And so, Jason, I don't have <coughs> much time left, but mm-hmm. we're gonna take out our show today with one of your songs from Earth Cycle called Breath. Tell us how folks can connect with you on social media. Ah, well, yes, thank you. Um, I'm the same on all social media. It's Jason Lee Wharton, and that's J-A-S-O-N-L-E-E-W-O-R-T-O-N. I'll just say it again quick. J-A-S-O-N-L-E-E-W-O-R-T-O-N. And that's everywhere, Instagram, Twitter, SoundCloud, everywhere. And um, this song is actually, I've released it as a single. The album hasn't gotten out yet, but there's a music video on YouTube for this song, Breath. And if you just look up me, Jason Lee Wharton, or even just Jason Wharton, you'll find it, Breath. Synchronizers, here is Breath. And we're going to leave you today. This is Andrea John Baptiste saying, until next week, Enjoy breath, and remember, the earth does have a cycle. Respect it. Mm, boom. Mm-hmm. Here I stay on the ground, waiting for the sun to come back around. Cannot sleep in this heat Mosquito singing is the only sound You'll see who you really be When you're hungry And the herb is all done You will see who is really there At the end of the day So just keep on drawing your breath Drawing your breath Keep on drawing your breath Drawing your breath
last star in the sky You think you're high and it's gone The sun is coming I said the sun is coming That's our time. That's our chat. Now it's time to call it a wrap. Tune in next week at 5 for another episode of Synergy Live, where music, business, and culture synchronize. Until then, hit us up online at livewithsynergy.com. Synergy is a production of Black Iowa TV.